What we're going to talk about tonight is um, the HCG diet. Um, I'm Dr. Talty, for those who don't know me. Um, I've been doing this diet with people since 2008, and it was quite a fluke how I ended up doing this because I grew up a fat kid, even though it might not look like it now, and failed at every diet. And at about age nine, I asked my mother to take me to an endocrinologist. I'm not sure how I knew what an endocrinologist was, but I knew it wasn't my fault. I knew there was something going on inside my body that wasn't working because I was eating nothing, driving around with friends who were eating at McDonald's and Hardee's and you know, all these places that I could never eat at. And they tested me and everything was in the normal range. And so that was that. And it wasn't until I was 12 and I was five foot, um, 150 pounds and, you know, was just so unhappy. I had to have my clothes made for me. None of the clothes on the rack fit. Um, and so uh, my pediatrician finally, you know, agreed to put me on diet pills for two weeks if I would start running. I said, you got a deal. So I started running and I haven't stopped and I lost 14 pounds and that was the start of my weight loss. Even though I was an active kid, I never actually did aerobic exercise. So I've now been running 44 years and I am not stopping. <laughs> Um, that went all the way to Ironman triathlons and all that crazy stuff. Um, but, um, you know, I, I, what, I, I've struggled. I've been in your place before. That's why I'm telling you this story. I know what it feels like to try and try and try and run into the wall and splat every time. And it's usually an endocrine problem. So I'm going to focus on, you know, the people who haven't seen me as patients to, to think about allowing me to look at your hormones. It's usually a subtle thyroid problem that doesn't show up in checking the TSH, which is what we're all taught in medicine to do is, you know, check a TSH. If it's fine, go on. And that's not the case. We need to look much deeper into that. Postmenopausal women, they need their bioidentical hormones back um, for a lot of reasons. It's not the stuff that causes cancer. Um, it actually prevents you from cancer and it gives you your waistline and your chin back. <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot of reasons why all women after 50 across the planet, no matter what kind of diets they keep, they all look the same. They all lose their, their you know, necks, their chins, and their waistline. So there are reasons for this. So I'm gonna focus a little bit on the endocrine system because it's, it's what's making us fat and keeping us fat. It really truly is. Um, so this diet, this is a crazy diet. I don't, you know, I, because I have struggled my whole life, in my mind, diets don't work. Lifestyle changes do. That's what worked for me. That's what's worked for, for patients. Until I had lunch with a crazy doctor friend at a conference who told me about this crazy HCG diet that he and his wife went on um, after the birth of their first child. And they were so elated because they weren't supposed to get pregnant because he had testicular cancer in medical school. Um, and they got pregnant and they were so elated they ate themselves silly for the entire nine months. And he gained as much as she did. <laughs> so he's telling me this story and I'm like, oh yeah, here goes another Dr. Oz, you know, diet secret. And he tells me about this HEG diet that he'd done three years ago and now he's done it for three years in his practice. And, and I'm like, yeah, right, you know, whatever. So Marilyn comes in a couple months later. Marilyn is our hospital operator. And everybody knows Marilyn because when you call the hospital, she's always the one that answers 24-7. I don't know if she ever took a, a moment off. And she was my patient for a while for her back problem. And through a crazy series of accidents, like her father-in-law falling on her physically in the movie theater line, she ends up in a wheelchair um, the doctors say that she needs two hip replacements, two knee replacements. She's now on oxygen because like her chest got smushed. And she already started out around 200 and now she's at about 280. And she can't even get out of the chair now because she's too heavy to get out of the chair and she can't breathe. And so I asked her, I said, Marilyn, what are you eating? You know, so we went through her caloric intake of the day and it was somewhere around 250 calories. She had stopped eating because she kept gaining weight and shut down her metabolism more and more and more, and she was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So this crazy conversation with this doctor that is now a really good friend, 
um, came back to me about this diet that you don't have to exercise and it just it burns fats, not muscle. And so I called Habib and asked him to send me a bottle and guide me through this because I have somebody desperately in need. So long story short, Marilyn did um, three rounds of the diet. You have to do six weeks in between doing rounds. She lost 90 pounds. Her goal for her retirement was to run around Disneyland and, and play with her grandkids. Um, and, you know, in, in the next year, she was sending me postcards from Disneyland with her grandkids. And what I never expected was six of her family and friends came to do the diet. And then six of their family and friends came to do the diet. And within two years of doing this diet with Marilyn, a third of my practice was doing this crazy diet that I never thought you know, should work or, or, or did work. And every time I would see a patient back, I'm like, really? <laughs> Sometimes I didn't even recognize them. They had changed so much because it burns only fat. It leaves your muscle and your bone alone. It's, it's, it, the, the way it works is HCG is the pregnancy hormone. And we only have it if we're pregnant or if we maybe have some sort of strange tumor that would be producing it. Um, and the whole purpose of it is to save the mother um, and the fetus from starvation if her caloric intake dropped to 500 calories or below. If that happens, the body switches over to bur from burning sugar to burning protein. And that's why you might know people who went on crash diets and they look gaunt and their skin is hanging. And it's because they're burning their collagen. Um, so the first place you're gonna, your body's going to look for in, to, to turn protein back into sugar is your muscles. You have about um, a, a day and a half of glycogen stored in your muscles for that purpose. Um, and then the next place it's going to look after protein that's easy to convert to sugar is your bone marrow. So that doesn't make sense for a foraging female that she's burning her muscle and now she's breaking her bones. Why not use the fat? And that's what nature has done. With HCG on board, she was pregnant. It stops the body from going after the muscle and the bone and it goes straight for the fat. So all that, you know, all that exercise that you've been doing, <laughs> you're trying to gain some muscle tone, stays there. And it's really interesting because as the fat melts away, your muscle tone comes back. You can actually see, you know, people call me and say, I have a tumor in my neck and it's their clavicle. They just haven't seen it in years <laughs> or ever. <laughs> I'm not kidding, it happens. Um, so, so it's been really fun for me because knowing what it feels like to fail and feel disgusted with yourself every time and then see people emerge out of this cocoon that they've been stuck in um, just gives me joy. Um, the maintenance is really where you succeed in this because that's where you really have to do the exercise. You don't have to do what I did, but you have to do something because our society, we're just way too sedentary. Um, in, in, you know, everything's convenient. You know, we're in this position, we're writing, we're sitting, we're driving, um, and sitting is the new smoking, if you haven't heard. Um, it's actually causing more health problems or just as many as smoking ever did. We've got everybody off cigarettes, but now we're stuck in front of computers. So it's not working for us. So you really have to, to do this diet, I ask people to kind of make a line in the sand with themselves that they just don't want to continue doing what they've been doing and they're willing to change drastically um, their lifestyle. Um, when you get off the diet, you kind of want to say goodbye to sweets and carbs as a regular fare um, in your diet. Um, carbohydrates like the starchy carbs, bread, rice, pasta, potatoes, chips, crackers, those kinds of things. Um, and you know, anything that's sweet, but after you do this diet, you lose your cravings for those things. You lose your bread cravings. You lose your pasta cravings. You lose your sweet cravings. It's quite interesting. Um, and that's a detox. Your body actually goes through a detox, you know, when you, when you do this. Because the wheat in this country is super high in gluten. Um, those kinds of starches go into our brain and actually attach to opiate receptors. And so we actually are truly addicted like we would be to, to drugs, um, you know, with eating the foods we're eating, especially the fast food restaurants. There's chemicals in those foods that keep you coming back. It's a physiologic trigger. So you have to kind of be willing to, to turn yourself inside and out and change the behaviors that got you here in the first place. 
But again, it may not all be your fault. A lot of it's hormones. A lot of it is hormone balance. So that's, that's, what, that's what this is about. Um, I've learned the hormone piece as a part of this, and, and people have become much more successful when I blend the hormones with, with the weight loss. So how does this how does this work? We know how it works. You know, it, it, it blocks you know the, the body chewing up your muscle and your bone goes straight for the fat. It's burning 2,000 calories a day from your fat storage. So your blood sugar is absolutely rock solid even. And we've had people come through who are on insulin pumps. You know, they didn't really tell their endocrinologist what they were doing because they probably wouldn't agree. Um, and they have done fabulous, and they've been able to monitor that, that, that blood sugar balance the entire time, and it's really, really true. And they've been able to get off two-thirds of their insulin and lose weight, which is hard to do with, with being on insulin. It's a fat storage hormone. How do they know how, how, do they know how much and how quick to cut back the insulin? On their blood sugar. They're, if, if they're taking too much insulin, it's going to be too low. So they need to pull back right. their insulin. So they had to monitor it very starting, closely. Like they, they're ahead. monitoring themselves constantly anyway. Okay. So, yeah, so they, they were able to dial back how much they actually needed, okay. which, you know, was a blessing. Um, yeah. So the way this works is it's a 30-day program. We use the sublingual HCG, which is under the tongue. So it's not the shots. There, I guess there's been a doctor here in town who used to use the shots, I think, back in the 70s. Um, so we don't use the shots. That just doesn't, it, it's unnecessary. We don't need to, to inject ourselves every day. Um, it's much easier to put the solution under your tongue twice a day and just keep your mouth clear. You keep your mouth clear five minutes or ten minutes before you do it. You hold it under your tongue for three minutes, and that's kind of hard because your saliva kind of starts mixing with it. And then you swallow it. You do not spit it out. That's one of the things that people have done. It's like, why am I not losing weight when you're not actually getting the HCG? Um, and then you, you um, keep your mouth clear of any kind of even water, food, or brushing, you know, brushing your teeth, um, for 10 minutes after. And you do it twice a day. It doesn't need to actually be um, a specific time. You can do it any time that fits into your routine. The first two days, we have to get the HCG into our fat cells because we're not pregnant at the time, at least most of us probably here. You're pregnant, right? <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, so we have to load it in. And the way we load it in is we go on kind of a fat binge, okay? They call it the gorge two days. Now, this does not mean you go out and you eat more than you normally eat. This just means that 80% of the calories you would normally intake have to come from fats, and we suggest good fats like avocado and olive oil, and if you're not dairy sensitive, whole, whole dairy, you know, cottage cheese, cream, you know, whatever. You can you know, have the biscuits and sausage, but I recommend not to have the biscuit because if you mix fat with carbs, that's the recipe to gain more weight. If you don't put the carb in there, you just have the sour cream and the butter without the potato, you will actually lose weight. In the fat loading phase, if you don't mix it with carbs, you actually have had people lose five pounds in the first two days of just the fat load. And I've had people gain five pounds in the first two days having a party, you know, eating all kinds of stuff that they shouldn't have eaten with their fat. So, you know, it does make a difference of how you do the fat load. But that, the accomplishment of that is to get the HCG, which you have started on that fat, the first fat loading day, is to get that HCG into your fat cells. Now, I have had people call me halfway through the diet saying, I'm not losing weight, I'm doing everything right. And I have to backtrack and say, and what we find out is that they didn't do the HCG during the fat load. They left it out. <laughs> so they never got it into their system. You see what I'm saying? So the whole reason you're doing the fat load is to get the HCG into your fat cells. So that's the first two days. Day three is when the actual diet starts. Now I provide you two prescriptions with this. One is an appetite suppressant, it's Phentermine. It's the safe half of the FenFen program, which you probably heard that caused cardiac problems. This is just, this is a stimulant. It's a mild stimulant. Um, they use it in wellness clinics. It's a mood stimulant. It kind of makes you feel like the whole world's wonderful. 
Um, and some people who are type B personalities don't feel so great on it. They don't like it. If you're marginal ADD and you have lots of plate spinning, you will love it because you will have your sock drawer color coded and you will have your spice rack alphabetized. I mean, you'll be in your closets and you'll be focused and you'll be getting all kinds of things done. So it just kind of depends on who you are. Um, that helps curb your appetite and you only take half. So it's a 37 and a half milligram pill, you take half and you take it early in the morning. It's optional. You don't have to take it. It doesn't have anything to do with the weight loss, except it helps you kind of not think about food and you're not getting triggered that you're hungry. Now the HCG is keeping your blood sugar nice and even, so you really shouldn't be hungry. But there's a lot of food triggers in our environment that kind of like a smoker who sits down for that first cup of coffee automatically lights up, doesn't even think about if they want a cigarette or not. So we have lots of those kinds of behavioral triggers for food. You know, you sit down and have to, you know, watch TV and you're putting something in your mouth and you don't even think about it. So the phentermine helps you kind of avoid that. Um, and that's really nice. Um, so um, the, f the, the meals that are part of this program, um, you, you get up that first morning and you do your HCG under the tongue, you take your phentermine or not, um, and then you don't have breakfast. This sort of incorporates that, that 18 or 14 hour fasting that people are talking about now where you switch into using ketones rather than sugar as your fuel for the day. So you, you don't have breakfast. You can have any kind of non-caloric drink. So if you have a little bit of coffee with your cream, you're gonna have to probably have tea because there's no dairy, there's no eggs, and there's no fat on the diet phase, okay? So um, we, uh, we don't have breakfast on this. Yes, we have tea, we can have coffee, black coffee. I don't know what that sound is. Um, oh, is it your phone? Okay. <laughs> um, and we just sort of pass on eating breakfast. You have to drink two liters of water a day because this diet is very detoxifying. So we want to rinse all those toxins, metabolic waste products that your fat cells have collected. They're getting blown up and they need to be rinsed out. So two liters of straight water a day. You can have other drinks on top of that. Um, other drinks on the diet would include, you get to have two um, soft drinks uh, that are you know, the low calorie. Um, a lot of the, the sugars that aren't xylitol or stevia are causing all kinds of neurologic problems, um, looking like, you know, can look like MS or Parkinson's. So that would be the aspartame or the Splenda. Um, but it's, it, you still, you can have two, two cans or bottles of that, you know, a day on the diet as a treat. You can have tea. A lot of people make sun tea and they put their stevia in the tea. Um, the fizzy waters, you know, the flavored fizzy waters that have no calories, just flavor, are fine. You know, a lot of people like just plain fizzy water anyway. Um, so those are all fine, but you have to have two liters of regular straight water. So your two meals consist of three and a half ounces of a protein that's on the list and three and a half ounces of a vegetable that's on the list. Now, Dr. Simeon, who developed this diet in Rome, um, between 1950 and 1970, probably did not understand the glycemic index. He hunted and pecked what, what foods worked and which ones didn't. But basically, now that we know how fast a, a food will turn into sugar, called the glycemic index, when we eat it, um, he has selected out the high glycemic vegetables. So the list of vegetables is, is in the, the pamphlet. And it's basically like cauliflower and broccoli and leafy greens and Brussels sprouts, cabbage, you know, things that don't have a lot of sugar. Um, zucchini's on the list, but squash is not because squash is in the pumpkin family and it has more, more sugar in it. So you could make a mistake like that, or you think that green beans is on it or red peppers is on it, and it's not. So I really ask you to focus on the food list and keep to that because we have people who, who you know, will, will fall off and they will actually um, stop losing weight, you know, and, and it doesn't make sense that a squash and a zucchini probably have probably the same calories, but it's the sugar content in, this, in the system. So the vegetables are definitely listed in the pamphlet. Um, the proteins exist of um, 
chicken breast, but not the brown parts. So none of the extremities, because there's more glycogen in the, the brown meat than there is in the breast meat. So you get chicken breast, you get um, any white fish, including all shellfish, um, and it can be farm raised or it could be wild. It doesn't really matter. It's hard to get good fish in this area anyway. <laughs> But you can have any of the shellfish. You can have clams, you can have um, shrimp, crab, scallops, you know, any, anything like that that you like. Um, and then there's three cuts of beef. You can have the tenderloin, the sirloin, or the round steak. Now we've added some other proteins since 1970 that we have access to. Um, and that would be low fat buffalo or venison. If you have access to venison, those are all fine. What's not on it are pork and lamb and turkey, because turkey actually has more, more glycogen also. So it's, it's, um, it's not on the diet when you're on the diet phase. So you get three and a half ounces of a protein and a vegetable at both of your meals. And usually people will eat at 12 noon and around six. Then you get two fruits and you get to choose from a whole lunchbox size apple, like the size of my fist, okay? You guys all have about the same size fist. Um, the small apples, not the big honking, you know, honey crisp that you can get at fresh market. Um, we've had people stop their weight loss with the honey crisps. So either, either a small apple or seven ounces, because sometimes we can't find small enough apples. So you might need to weigh your apple and share some with a friend or, you know, leave it there. Um, but if you go over with the fruit, that's too much sugar in the system, and that can stop the weight loss. Um, the other rule of the fruit is that your fruit has to be separated in time by six hours, meaning you have to not eat them. You know, they have to be six hours apart. Now, some people use their fruit to, to eat as a dessert from their meals, or some people will eat them a mid-afternoon and a mid-evening snack, but six hours apart. So you have four eating experiences rather than two um, because there's not that much food on the diet, um, uh, but it's satisfying. And I, believe it or not, some people call and say, do I have to eat all the food? I'm just not hungry. I'm not kidding. Yeah. So, you know, you just kind of don't get hungry when your blood sugar is super um, balanced and you have access to probably more calories than you're probably eating now. You really have access to 2,500 calories. So that's like football players. Do you have to eat the fruit? No, no. I've had some people who are so carb sensitive, they don't eat the fruit or they just eat one. So you get a whole apple, a, um, a whole navel orange, doesn't matter the size, six strawberries or half of a grapefruit. So you're saying you have to wait six hours after you eat your... No, they just have to be separated. The two fruits that you get have to be separated in time by, two, by six hours. Oh, you can't eat them together? You can't eat them together. Okay. It's too much sugar in the system and that will stop your weight loss. Right. Yeah, this diet is not only just the calories involved, but there's a chemistry aspect to it. So, you know, people have gotten in trouble with like over-the-counter lozenges or gums. Um, you know, or salad dressings that really didn't fit into the, the, the fat, you know, no fat. And you don't feel like eating at all, what will happen? I had a lady do that and she still lost weight and she didn't feel bad at all, you know, because you're mobilizing previously stored calories. I'm not sure I'd recommend it nutritionally, um, but yeah, I, I had a lady who just absolutely did not want to eat at all. And I think she did that for a month. She certainly had a lot to work on. And she ended up losing like 32 pounds. And, you know, she didn't feel lightheaded or dizzy or shaky or any of that. It was kind of interesting. Yeah. So that's, that's why I like to have these meetings is because this is how you're supposed to do it. And then this is how a lot of people have ended up doing it. And, you know, sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. Um, so those are your fruit choices. Um, the other thing... The other aspect about the vegetables is that there's a lot of vegetables on the list that sounds like they'd make a great salad together. And guess what? You can't mix your vegetables. So you have to have just the tomatoes or just the radishes or just the spinach leaves, you know, or just the cauliflower. So you can't really mix them up. And again, that will start your weight loss, which is another kind of interesting aspect to this. So the two rules are, you know, the, the fruits six hours apart and the, the lunchbox size apples. And it can be any 
apple variety, but I would probably stay away from Honeycrisp and Pink Ladies and the really super, super sweet apples if you're carb sensitive. Go with more, you know, the Brayburns and the, the you know, the reds and the greens. Yeah. Um, and then that's what you do for six weeks or for, for four weeks is you, you, you eat twice a day, you pass on the morning food and you just live your life and you stay busy. Um, and you can exercise if you're already exercising, you can start an exercise program. A lot of people have done that gentle exercise, walking or yoga or Pilates, stuff like that. Um, I've had professional tennis players do this while they were on the circuit and they felt fine, you know, cause they were on TV and they wanted to look good. Um, and you know, I've had people who are doing just crazy Mongo exercise. That was their normal lifestyle. And they just did the same thing. People who exercise through this lose more weight, I've noticed. But then my Marilyn was stuck in a wheelchair and she couldn't exercise and she lost just as much weight as well. So that's what makes it kind of different. You know, it, it kind of doesn't make sense if we think of ourselves as furnaces, you know, calories in and, and calories out. We're just not like that, you know. How much can you lose on this? I mean, you don't have to stop at one month, right? Well, what you have to do, when you, you do it for a month, and women on average, if they're in hormone balance, okay, that's a key. That's what I've learned over the several years I've been doing this. If they're in hormone balance to start with, and they don't, you know, jump start and want to start the diet before they are, they won't lose as much. Um, they lose anywhere from 25 to 32 pounds in the month. Guys will lose obviously more. My biggest loser was Ken. He lost 55 pounds, <laughs> um, but that was unusual, but he had a lot to lose. Um, but you, in between rounds, you can do multiple rounds, but you have to wait six weeks in between the rounds. And the reason for that is that the HCG, your brain gets used to it, it gets habituated to it, and so it doesn't work. It stops working somewhere between 30 days and 40 days. And you'll have enough in your bottle, if you measure it right, to go somewhere in between that. Okay, but then your brain just stops and you stop the weight loss. So you have to give it a washout period of um, six weeks and then you can start it again. Now, the maintenance, there's some tricks in the maintenance. Well, let, let, me, let me stick with the diet first. Okay, so you're dieting and all of a sudden you're not losing all the weight. What's going on? Um, a plateau is you get on the scale, you know, that first day and the second day you haven't lost a whole pound and the third day you haven't lost a whole pound from that first day that you stopped losing. That's a plateau. That is if you are actually eliminating your stool every day. Because there's not so much fiber and not so much food on this, if you don't pass the bowel movement every day, you might not see the weight loss that day. So that's why we have the magnesium in the pamphlets, you know, magnesium citrate or complex. Um, that helps us get regular and stay regular, okay? You want to use that because you want to see the payoff every single day. And if you stop eliminating, you're not going to see it. It's still happening. So once you have a bowel movement and everything gets cleared out, you're going to like go down two or three pounds, but you want to make sure that your stool is very regular. We use just regular magnesium complex to do that. If you're stooling and you haven't lost more than a pound on that third day of getting on the scale, that's a plateau. Okay. And, and it's average to go through two of those in the 30 day time frame. So what we do with a plateau is what's called an apple day. And you probably have read that in the pamphlet for those who have the pamphlet already. Um, that's kind of a reboot, okay? So again, you don't eat until noon and you have the opportunity to eat up to six apples by the time you go to bed, okay? A lot of people can't eat that many apples. <laughs> it's a lot of apples. It's a lot of apples. <laughs> um, and the size doesn't matter and the variety doesn't matter and the time in between doesn't matter. So all that gets thrown out. You can have your six apples and you can do them two at a time or a half hour apart or whatever. Um, and you will lose two pounds the next day. Okay. That's the apple day. That's on the diet phase in the maintenance. And this is where I was getting to your question. We have what's called the steak day. Now, the way the maintenance works is when you're done with the HCG, you have to do three more days of the 500 calories. That's a recalibration time. 
that's when your body's getting used to being at this weight and you're getting used to, you know, still eating small amounts without the HCG kind of boosting your blood sugar. And that's, you know, you'll still lose weight because you're only eating 500 calories. Um, and the HCG is kind of washing out of your system. So you won't burn muscle either. Um, so the, f the first three days, you still stay on the 500 calories. Then you go on to the maintenance, which is basically avoiding sweets and carbs. Now I have a whole list of foods that I brought, borrowed from Dr. Stephen Gundry's book, The Evolution Diet, um, where it was the perfect maintenance foods. So I'm like, oh, you know, I'm gonna borrow that and give him credit for it because I have a list of like things you can't do, but people are like, well, what can I eat? You know, so this kind of lays it out as to what the best food choices are. And you wanna still keep your portions low, okay? This is a time of stepping back into your normal life um, and making different food choices and maybe making different alcohol choices. Um, you can have alcohol you know, on the maintenance. You cannot have any alcohol during the diet phase. Um, and that's been a breaker for some people. Like, I'm not taking that, see ya. Um, and that's okay, but you, know, you have to forego your alcohol during the, the diet phase, but you can have like one drink or one glass of wine on the maintenance. So when you finish that 500 calorie, that last day of 500 calorie equi equilibration time, that's your target number that you want to stay within two pounds when you go on the maintenance phase, okay? During that maintenance phase, your, your weight is gonna vacillate. Okay, and you don't want to let it get, you know, have the cat get out of the bag. So if you go up more than two pounds of your end of the weight number, that's when you have to do what's called a steak day. Okay, you have stopped your fentramine if you were taking it. You can go back on it on the, on the steak day because steak day basically is you don't eat any food. You can have your coffee or you can have your tea and you can have your dairy in your coffee if you want, but no food until dinner time, and then you can have a six to 10 ounce steak, any, any cut, with either a raw tomato or a whole apple. And again, that's like another two pounds of weight loss. So I have had some people lose more weight doing that on a regular basis in the maintenance than they, than they lost you know, over time, than they lost in the, in the, um, the weight loss phase. A friend that is a truck driver, a long haul truck driver, sits on his fanny all day, um, lost 35 pounds on the, the diet phase, and then changed his food at all the truck stops and started eating salads rather than burgers and fries, and did a steak day every two, every, like twice a week, and he lost another 150 pounds. So a lot of people will do steak days in the maintenance phase if they're going to do another round, and so they keep peeling off you know, about four pounds a week doing the, the steak days in that six weeks. So you don't have to like, you know, lose any time um, if you wanted to, to keep losing weight. Um, so yeah, so the, the maintenance needs some coaching and that's why, you know, the program has two office visits if you already aren't a patient because you're so excited and you're so terrified to go back into the real world. Because when you're on the, the weight loss phase, um, you know, things are pretty sketched out for you. It's, it's pretty rigid and, you know, you get used to eating um, the food. I would hope that you would actually try different foods. Everybody gets stuck on eating chicken and broccoli. You know, they're like, uh, you know, so if you're a foodie, um, let me have that book next to you, if you would, ma'am. Uh, both of those, actually. Yeah. Um, there's some great recipes for the HCG in all three phases. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, this is the HCG Gourmet Diet Book. It's a little bit used here. Um, it goes over the three phases and great recipes and things that you can buy over the counter, um, like sauces and salad dressings and you know marinades that actually fit within the, the fat and the sugar requirements. Um, so I always recommend that book. You can get it at Barnes & Noble or you can get it on Amazon. And then this one um, was recommended by the woman who actually owns the HCG company. And it's called the um, Weight Loss Apocalypse. And it's all about why we eat. There's a lot about emotional eating in here that I think is really important. That we've you know, substituted food for love. And she has a lot of good suggestions of you know, kind of behavior modification techniques of you know, how to at least identify when you're doing that. And I think we're all doing that. She's been doing the HCG diet. She's an exercise physiologist. And she's been doing the HCG diet with her clients, the author, 
um, for like 20 years. And so she's got some great pointers and you know, gets at some of the deeper psychologic issues as to why we do this. Yeah, so um, any questions?